Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And today Google released the first beta of the upcoming Android Q OS. So yes, the next version of Android will be called Q, some sort of tasty treat starting with the letter Q. So Google's gonna really have to stretch to figure out what they're going to call it. Now go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know if you have any ideas of what it might be. Now I'm fairly certain they're gonna call it Android 10 because of course the previous version being nine, but also something I noticed within the OS, I will actually show that off in this video. Now I do have Android Q running on my Google Pixel 3 XL right now. I'll post information on how to install it and all that good stuff down below. If you'd like to join the beta, keep in mind that there's going to be bugs involved, especially with the first beta. So I'd kind of be wary about installing it right now. But with that being said, I wanna talk about everything I've noticed, everything new so far. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin, taking a look at the timeline that Google has laid out, you will see that there is six planned betas leading up till the final release. So of course you can expect more videos from me coming on Android Q all throughout the year. Be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified when those go live. So here's my Pixel 3 running the Android Q beta. Now overall, I would say aesthetically looks fairly similar. However, spoiler alert, there is actually a dark mode you can enable finally. I'll show you how that's done in just a second. Now, first of all, when you go into settings, you go into that little Easter egg, it still shows the Android P Easter egg. However, I noticed if you kind of quickly tap, it will bring up this paint APK. The reason I know it's paint APK is when I go like this and press and hold on it, it says paint APK. So you can actually go ahead and just draw some stuff. Maybe you want to switch the color, just a really random uh, hidden Easter egg within the system. Now I did mention Android 10 being the next version, which does make sense, but if I go into developer options, system UI demo mode, and actually hit show demo mode, up at the top, those icons do change to 100% battery life, and then the time is actually 1010, which in the past has actually hinted at what the version is gonna be called. So you could, it's pretty safe to assume it'll be Android 10. Now keep in mind, these can change over time. This is just a beta. I will keep you updated on social media, YouTube videos, all that good stuff. Now, first of all, pulling down the status bar, you will see your notification standard. You can still minimize and maximize them if you'd like to. Now, one thing to make note of is if you swipe from the right, it will actually bring up a couple options. Now, you actually can't even dismiss an app by swiping right to left. It is just not possible at all. So the only way to really dismiss notifications is swiping left to right. Now swiping to the right gives you these two options. Now, first of all, you can actually stop showing notifications within a specific app if you'd like to. Now you also can actually click on the snooze icon so you can snooze one for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours, or one hour. Now you may or may not have noticed this, but up towards the top, you will see the battery percentage. But if you swipe down, you actually will see until 10 p.m. So it lets you know how long your battery is going to actually last. Now, in my opinion, Android Q really seems to be focusing on privacy, which is a very good thing. And there's a lot of further app permissions. So for example, if I go into the camera app for the first time I cleared the data, you'll see allow camera to access the device's location. Now, not only does it say yes or no, it says allow all the time, allow only when the app is in use or deny. So if you only want the camera to be able to access your location while you're using it, you can select that, which is a nice addition to the OS. If I press and hold the power button, it brings up that power menu, still power restart screenshot. However, emergency got added where you can make a phone call or check the user's emergency information. Now, quick tip, if you press and hold these icons, it will jump into those quick settings. And I do wanna go into Wi-Fi settings because if I, got, if I go to my specific network, I can actually share it and it will create a QR code for others to connect so I don't have to actually type out a password or let them know what the password is. I will need to actually confirm pattern or my fingerprint to access this. Now, if I go back and hit add network and I click on this icon right there, I can actually scan a QR code to access someone else's Wi-Fi network. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there is a dark mode, yes, to completely change the UI, the backdrop from that blaring white if you wanna switch it to a black coloring, especially with AMOLED displays. Now, to do so, unfortunately, there's no real setting to toggle it. You have to actually turn on battery saver and turning on battery saver will enable that dark mode. That's the only way other than actually typing in ADB codes to enable this dark mode. So now with battery saver on, you will see this turns black. If I jump into settings, the whole background is completely different. So nice, especially with that eye strain, but a bit of a bummer, you can only do it 
within that battery saver mode. However, like I said, it's just a beta. They probably will update that in the future. Now with the addition of dark mode, there's also some theming options. So within developer options, I wanna go all the way down and there's accent colors. So device default, I can go to a black accent. So you'll see here, things just turn black and white. And then if I go into green, that icon's green. These icons are green. One more, purple. And that is an option. So very basic theming options with an accent color, but a good start. There is also a font setting with headline and body font, which you can change to a different font right here, which I really don't like this font. So I'm gonna keep it on default, but in the future, I'm sure they will add more and more fonts. And then of course the last one being icon shape. So there is the teardrop icon. Now I'm gonna go home here and those icons are all changed down at the bottom to the teardrop, but make note that these icons get changed as well, the quick setting toggle. So those are changed. Let's actually check all of them out now. So I wanna go to teardrop, squircle, which is like a square circle. So if I go home again, the icons are square circles. Same with these icons up top. And then of course, one more to rounded rectangle. So if I go home, there is that rounded rectangle look. I'm not sure if you'll like it, you may or may not, but again, that is an option within developer settings. Now, one interesting thing is actually when you take screenshots, so you press volume down in power or press and hold the power button to get to the screenshot, is that the screenshot itself will actually include the notch now and rounded corners. So if we go ahead and view the screenshot, you will see here, there's that notch and the corners are rounded as well. So that is what the screenshots now look like. It doesn't include all of that information. Now, another update, they are focusing on the sharing menu, which I really like because it can be a little slow on Android. So if you do press share, it will go ahead and give you options to type to a specific person. And you'll see how much quicker that actually was. I'm actually gonna blur personal details out, but that was very quick. Now I wanna test that out one more time. So if I go into Chrome, maybe I wanna share google.com to someone and I press share. It still can be a little slow to bring up that person menu. As you can see right there, it was a little delayed, but it is nice that they're gonna focus on it. I'm sure it will continue to get better and better. Now, a couple things I'm not able to show off. First of all, Android Q will have foldable phone support. With foldable phones coming, Android Q will support that. You'll see this screenshot next to me. And then of course, another one, which I can't show off, which I wish I could, is actually maybe, let's say you need some sort of Wi-Fi connection to connect to the internet and the app you're using needs the internet to work. Within that app, it will load up Wi-Fi settings, which is really cool actually, so you don't have to actually jump into an entirely new app into settings, change your Wi-Fi or pull down the toggle. It'll automatically prompt you. Maybe it's Bluetooth, maybe it's Wi-Fi, but a neat addition to Android Q. Finally, I'd like to jump back into settings, make some notable things. They actually split up some settings. Location security got split into two. They've also added privacy for app permissions, unlock screen, and some advanced privacy features. Digital well-being is still there, and I believe that will continue to evolve. It's actually rumored that wind down will be on a per app basis in the future, as opposed to it just being completely system wide right now. So overall, that's everything I wanna cover on the Android 10 Q beta. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Drop a comment if you did. And again, great that they are actually adding a night mode. I hope that comes with a toggle where I can keep it on or off without having to turn battery saver mode on. So we will see in the future if that's the case. But anyways, that's my full video on the brand new update. Again, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.